everybody, it's Mike again. I real this is day two of videos about Rapid Composer, uh, and I realized that I sort of overdid it in the first one because what I was really trying to demonstrate in that one was that you can indeed do complex routing out of Rapid into Live, but I think a lot of people probably want to just do it simpler than that. So I thought I would do a kind of getting started video and uh, suggest that people watch this one first and then the second one if you want to go into great detail. So what we've got here is a little rapid composer tune. And let me start on the rapid side. Uh, in order for this to work the way that this demo is working, um, you have to fiddle just a little bit. You have to change the instrument on each track from the general user built-in instrument of Rapid to general MIDI out. Don't send ch patch changes, that's the default. And then in this particular example, it's coming out on the Rapid Composer virtual MIDI output. All three tracks are exactly the same. The only difference is that with each track I'm changing the channel because I want to send the output of Rapid to three different channels on Live. And if they're all on the same channel, Live can't sort them apart. So on the Rapid side, three different tracks, three different channels. If you have 20 tracks, 20 channels, uh, whatever. And the other thing that I'm doing is uh, on first on the rapid side is in the MIDI settings, I'm having rapid listen to the IAC driver uh, bus for start, stop, continue, and position. And then moving over to live on the live preferences side, uh, here is the rapid composer virtual MIDI output that will just, it'll appear when Rapid runs. And I think it'll appear default with track data turned on. If not, make sure that that's turned on because that's the way the MIDI notes get from Rapid to Live. And then the, the little bit of a tricky bit is you have to turn on sync and remote on the output from Live into Rapid channel, which in this case I'm using the IAC driver. In Windows, this is sometimes called the virtual MIDI channel. Um, this is just the Apple version of that. Uh, but this works in Windows too. Um, so uh, that's kind of the story on the rapid side. On the, on the live side, here are three channels that I've created, you know, just plain old new MIDI tracks. I've stuck a VST on each channel, two instances of Keyscape and one instance of a, a built-in live instrument. Uh, and at this point, if I play, nothing will happen. And I'll show you why. It's because in the live world, um, uh, I mean, one way you can force live to listen is you can have it. Uh, oh, I gotta make this rascal loop so that I can turn it on and forget about it. So, one way to get live to make sound is you can just have it listen to its input and then it will play. But if you put it back in auto, which is the normal thing, uh, it won't until you record arm it. And what I generally do is I just record arm the tracks uh, uh, because I want to record the MIDI at some point. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Now, the one problem that we've got is all three instruments are playing at the same time and they're playing all the parts. And that's because while Rapid has sent things on channels 1, 2, and 3, uh, Live is listening to all instruments, all channels. So it's, it's even listening 
to my keyboards. So that's why it's getting kerpuzzled. So we need to narrow its focus a little bit. So first we're going to make sure that it's just listening to rapid. But you can see that still hasn't solved the problem and that's because it's listening on all channels. And you can see that it's actually marching down the channels here. But because it's listening on all channels, it's not sorting them out. So in order to get three different things on three different channels, you have to send it on channels and you have to receive it on channels here in live. And that ought to get you going. Now, let's say that we want to record this. That's what I want to do, for sure. Um, just to show you the... You see the song position works. It's If I'm moving it in live, which is what I'm doing now, uh, it's also moving in rapid. So that's kind of handy. And, you know, I like being able to spend most of my time in live and not have to... Uh, jump back and forth between transport controls. So that's how that works. Just a nice to have, not critical. Um, but to get stuff into live, eventually, uh, presumably, you're going to want to edit this stuff in live. And I noticed in the thread on KVR um, that people have tended to export the MIDI in, into live rather than recording it in. Uh, and you can do that for sure, but you can also record it in because now with this transport control stuff working, I can just record it and it's going to fire. And you know, there are my little notes uh, coming in and it'll repeat right on the stroke there. So the nice thing is you get it synced right up to live. You don't have to slide things around and stuff like that and you can start and stop and all that good stuff um, the only tricky bit is that uh, right now I don't know how to get either live or rapid to tell each other what the tempo is I haven't worked real hard on this because I'm now at a point where I, I need to go learn how to use rapid. You can tell by my subtle composition over here that uh, I'm pretty much a beginner at rapid. But I wanted to make sure I could do the things I want to do in live before I went too far into rapid, and this has convinced me that I can. And the one thing, as I say, that I've not figured out is how to tell both of them to tell each other what tempo. And this is not terribly important to me right now. It may be if I want to do tempo changes over here that I'll want to really figure out how to transmit those to live, but that's down the road. So uh, in rapid, uh, the one thing you need to do is uh, make sure that the tempo is the same between the two, uh, or rapid will... I haven't tried this, but let me just do a quick change here, change this to some oddball tempo like 94, why not, and just see. I would expect this to be uh, bad, that it wouldn't line, it no longer would line up on the, uh, on the, right on the stroke this way, but you never know, let's see what happens. Yeah, see, it's there's the end of the the loop, and it's slower because Rapid's sending in 94, and Live is listening at 120, and so that's that's no good. So if you want to make sure that I'm not kidding, if we make this 94, um, they ought to line up again. Let's just confirm that for the disbelieving among us. I don't believe it till it's shown. Yeah, see, there you go. Lines right up on beat four, just like it's supposed to. So that's the one thing I haven't figured out. And it's not a big deal unless you're planning to do tempo changes measure for measure or section by section. At that point, if you figure out how to do it, 
drop me a line because <laughs> I want to know too. There, that's my quick get started demo. And if you want to learn more about more elaborate routing, uh, the second video, the first one I posted, but the second one is uh, much more complex. I'll just show you what I mean. This this group is this is the one that I did in the first video, uh, and you know you can you can do all kinds of cool stuff with with the routing between the two. But that's for another day. There you go.